Jonathan King 23. Well, I was telling you about my uh, TV series, Good Evening, I'm Jonathan King, that ran nationally networked on ITV at 6.30 on Saturday evenings, and we ran for 26 weeks. It was really quite a success. Um, and I had, as I said to you earlier on, numerous people on. Frank Zappa was one of the most uh, noteworthy when he didn't speak a word other than yes or no in the entire interview and threw me dreadfully. Uh, I've mentioned that Peter Frampton of The Herd was on and, uh, and was a very dear friend of mine. Uh, I also was very proud to be the person who first discovered and promoted and pushed and raved about the Bee Gees, who, of course, to this very day are making great records. So, um, Good Evening was a big success. And this uh, one thing I haven't mentioned that you might have noticed is at this point in my life, and I was in my early 20s, I grew a beard. Just a little sort of sweet little goatee beard and moustache. It was the first time, I mean, I'd really not even shaved for ages and ages, um, you know, when I was younger. And then I finally got to shave and I thought, as a lot of people do at that age, it would make me look like a real man. So I grew this horrible little beard and moustache and that lasted with me for quite a while, I've got to say. I was still going out to the clubs with my friend Scott Walker. Uh, Scott and I were incredibly close. There were a lot of rather amusing uh, remarks in the papers, which we didn't mind at all. One of the pictures pe featured us coming out of the clubs or, or going into a club and looking as though we were holding hands just because it was a trick of the photograph. Uh, one of the gossip things says, jo does Jonathan King eat Scott's oats for breakfast every morning? I mean, these days we'd probably be mortified, but those days we just rocked with laughter and thought it was all terribly funny. He was a very dear friend of mine, but I did at the time have a girlfriend. And she was a very sweet girl called Joan Thurkettle, who went on to become one of the top ITN newsreaders and reporters for television. Uh, we were terribly close for several years. Uh, and sadly, in fact, it was rather nice. I bumped into her and we went and had dinner two or three times only a few years ago and picked up on all the things because after we stopped going out with each other we sort of lost touch and I caught up on everything she'd married I think she'd married Edgar Wallace's son or grandson you know the writer and she had kids and she was really successful on television such a sweet girl tragically she got cancer and died in her 40s uh, and I have to say one of the awful things about my recent trials and tribulations is of course she would have come and stood up in the courtroom and uh, and absolutely thrown out the ludicrous claims that were being made about me from that time actually but of course she was sadly dead so she couldn't. Joni and I used to go many times out to various clubs I mean we also did more standard things like uh, we went out, uh, we opened a fair with my mum and uh, got some coverage in the local paper, which was rather fun. But uh, we used to also go out to Joe Cocker gigs. Joe Cocker had only just started and Joan and I sort of discovered him. You remember Joe Cocker with that wonderful sort of air guitar he used to play? I get by with a little help for my friends. Very, very talented, charismatic young guy from Sheffield. Uh, and Joan and I were amongst her very early fans. Uh, at the same time, I was uh, becoming a Radio 1 DJ and I was cropping up on, on radio, uh, doing various slots. Nothing permanent, but, you know, like sitting in for people and just enjoying myself and having a lot of fun. And perhaps most important of all in this era, I bought my little house. The same little house that I am doing this in at this very moment. And it's the most lovely little house in the heart of Bayswater. I've now lived here for over 40 years. Uh, I love the place. I'm very happy here. Uh, it's very cosy and very snug. All of my friends have been round here. And it had the most massive coverage in the newspapers. And again... Rather strange, you went claims were made against me many, many decades later. Quotes were made about the house, 
which came straight from the newspapers of the time. People who had never been to my house made comment about the uh, mirrored toilet, which I think you saw in episodes one and two of the uh, Jonathan King diaries, uh, the wooden wall, which you could see behind me now. All the various bits and pieces uh, were quoted, and they could have come straight out of a newspaper. People didn't have to be here to know what my house was like. It was a very, very well-publicised house and a home. Um, and I've lived here, as I said, for many years now. All the neighbours are great friends. Uh, the entire surrounding area I, I have friends in, the people who sell flowers on the corner, the people in the shops. And one of the nicest things of all over the last few years is every time I go out, some of these people in the restaurants and the shops and so on say, Hello, Jonathan, how are you doing? We don't believe a thing of all the rubbish that was printed about you. We love you dearly. It's actually really quite consoling that uh, when you've lived in a neighbourhood, as I have for 40 years, the people know you and trust you and are fond of you, and they don't care what the media says. Next, Jonathan King, 24.